welcome members, <coughs> officers, honorary aldermen, and any members of the public viewing at home to this evening's council meeting. Please be seated. There is no fire drill planned for this evening. If the fire alarm sounds, please make sure make your way from the chamber using either the fire escape to my right or via the stairwell that leads off from the lobby outside the chamber. Item one. Ms Willis, may I please have any apologies for absence? Thank you, Madam Mayor. So I've received apologies from Councillor Mark Gordon, Councillor Liz Noble, Councillor John Skipper, Councillor Helen Whitcroft and Councillor Leanne McIntyre. Thank you. Item two. Moving on to agenda item two, I propose that the minutes of the meeting of the Council held on the 21st of February 2024 be approved as a correct record. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, ma'am. Yes, I would like to second that. Madam Is that a... Could I may raise a point, point of order on the uh, item dealing with the 50th anniversary. Um, I was just wondering how this squares with the leader of the council's statement that no resources uh, of officer, officer time or finance would be devoted to marking the 50th anniversary of the borough. How, that, how the statement as it reads there squares with that. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Councillor right. Rowlands. Um, I've just been advised that it would be probably more appropriate to ask that question of the leader in leader's questions time. Is that agreed, members? Agreed. Agenda item three, declarations of interest. Do any members have any disclosable pecuniary or non-pecuniary interest to declare in relation to the matters which are to be considered at this meeting. No, thank you. Item four, I'm advised that no questions have been received from members of the public. Item five is my announcement. I'm sorry, there's quite a few this evening. Um, so I'll get on with it. This is my last council meeting as mayor. Next month, we elect our mayor, so I'm going to take this opportunity to reflect on the last 12 months. Firstly, I would like to thank all the councillors who voted for me and gave me the opportunity to be mayor for a second term of office. <clears throat> to represent the borough as mayor is a privilege and an honour, not once, but twice and I have endeavoured to do my best to serve the people of this borough and accept as many invitations as possible. On my year, I have visited many charities and organisations who support the less able in the community and who have not been able to continue, they've been able to continue their valuable work without the willing band of volunteers. So a big thank you to all the volunteers who give so generously of their most valuable asset, their time, to helping others. Having visited many of the charities, clubs, societies and youth organisations, it makes you appreciate that without the volunteer, Surrey Heath would be a much poorer place. You see the same old faces, but in many different guises. So if anyone's looking to spend a few hours a week helping others, there are plenty of opportunities. I have visited residential care homes and it is reassuring to see the caring relationships built up between residents and carers. My consort and I attended prize givings and presented young people with their much coveted Duke of Edinburgh awards. 
watch with admiration the action, excellent production of the high school musical performed by students at Collingwood College. It must have taken many hours of hard work by both pupils and their teachers to achieve such a high standard. Well done, Collingwood. I attended the Camberley Theatre to watch productions from two local dance schools, ages ranging from two to 20. That's quite a spectacular when you see the little ones. We have so much talent, enthusiasm, and dedication by teachers who support these young people, and this must be encouraged. I attended a mess dinner of the sea cadets where the adult officers prepare, cook, and serve the dinner to the cadets. The dinner is run on mess rules, including the passing of the port, and much to my surprise, not standing to toast the, royal, the, the king. But this apparently was due to the fact that when we had the wooden ships, the king stood up, bumped his head, and they, and they never rose again to toast him. I attended a prize giving and a Christmas service for the army cadets. These young people wear their uniform with pride and honour. Their service offers, these services offer so much with regard to life skills to these young people and guide them on their path to the future. Let us never forget that young people are our future and it is our duty to encourage them and assist where possible to make sure that they have suitable buildings to meet in. Also, lots of other events. Riding on a trailer attached to a, the back of a 1960s tractor on Easter Sunday with the Easter Bunny waving to passers-by. I thought I was really popular with it because everybody was waving, but um, realised they weren't looking at me. Stopping at the pubs for refreshments. And the event, this event raised money for the Windlesham Field of Remembrance and a brain tumour charity. The Easter Bunny was some six foot tall and was giving out Easter eggs and sweets. Mum turns to her young child and said, wave to the Easter Bunny. The child looks. He's not the Easter Bunny. He's got shoes on. The fact that he was six foot tall really didn't faze him at all, but an Easter Bunny wearing shoes did. How many of you knew that scrambling motocross started in Camberley in 1924? The centenary was celebrated by a great event put on by the Camberley and District Cycle Club. And John Sparks, the son of the winner of the 1924 scramble, was there welcoming people on the day. The 1924 was run over the whole day with two races and a break in the middle for lunch. How very civilised. This brought back many happy memories for me and my consort because my late husband and I and the children often went to the scrambles on Red Road. This time it was just my consort and myself. My consort taking up the challenge on behalf of the mayor of riding pillion on the back of a scramble bike. Not an easy task without pegs. We opened a beer festival for craft beers of the Ascot Brew in Camberley, and unfortunately, the mayor's teetotal. <laughs> so they've really pulled the short straw. But I took along a beer taster who informed me the beer was great, and we ate dangerous dogs, otherwise known as hot dogs, uh, for lunch, and they were extremely tasty. We had a conducted tour of the state of the arts dental surgery in, Bar in Bagshot, something new. And my, uh, my consul and I have the honour of being invited to the Nepalese New Year this coming Saturday by the Nepalese community. Now, did you know that the Gurkhas have been part of the British Armed Forces since 1815? And it was with great pleasure that I attended the signing of the Armed Forces Covenant in this chamber, which was signed by Councillor McIntyre on behalf of the Borough Council. There was a working lunch paid for by the Mayor to discuss how we could assist the more elderly of the Nepalese community to become more involved. 
Following the discussions, it was agreed that the ladies could and would like to, to knit poppies to be sold as part of the November poppy appeal. So if anyone's got any wool or knitting needles they don't want, please contact the Mayor's office. They're also looking for an allotment so where they can grow flowers. So I'm hoping that green spaces will find something. So that was some of my very enjoyable year. I'd like to thank Green Spaces for all their work that they've done with tree planting and also the, uh, their green flags. And I would like to thank all the staff and officers for their help and support that they have given me during the last year. My thanks for the input for Gavin and Miss Willis and to thank Mr Roberts for his help and guidance during some difficult meetings. He has been a rock during difficult debates and I was very sorry to learn that he's leaving us but wish him every success in his new post. My thanks also go to Helen who deals with all the requests and keeps me in the right place at the right time. And to all the councillors who also give up their time to serve the public, please remember we need to work together for the good of the borough for that's what we're here for, our residents. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item six, I'd like to invite the leader, Councillor Sean MacDonald, to make his announcements. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for your update and words. As we are currently in the formal pre-election period, I will keep my leader's announcements brief and factual. Some might say bland in tone, some might say what's changed to normal, but maybe even that assessment is political in nature and banned today. Firstly, I would like to thank everyone from across the chamber who attended the official signing of our new armed forces covenant on the 20th of March in the council chamber. In the presence of a number of veterans of our own, as well as local key stakeholders. The Covenant recognises the huge sacrifice made by military personnel and their loved ones and the significant disadvantage faced by so many ex-service men and women in trying to access employment, housing and other services once they leave. Moving on, I also wanted to let members know that Surrey Heath residents and entrepreneurs Sherry and Jerry Lawson received one of the first ever King's Awards for Enterprise this week from the Lord Lieutenant of Berkshire for their business Frog Brights Limited, targeting kids' well-being and health by active travel through cutting-edge design, fabrication and assembly focused on sustainability. There were a few wee ones on the day who appeared more interested in using the products than listening to speeches and admiring the cut at the Glass Award. One of only 68 in the realm and valid for five years, this award builds on the previous Queen's Award which is a remarkable back-to-back -back achievement. Looking internally for a moment, with the resignation of Damien Roberts confirmed today, who will be taking up a new role as Chief Executive, Tunbridge and Morling Borough Council in the summer, I wanted to update members on the arrangements we are taking to ensure that this key role is covered going forward and appropriate handover arrangements are made. The Council's Employment Committee will be meeting on 18th of April 2024 to agree the process for appointing to the role of an interim basis, on an interim basis, ideally from within the organisation. In line with the Council's constitution, the actual appointment will be made by the Council's Appointment Subcommittee, which will take place on the 26th of April 2024 and will include a rigorous selection process. As this is a statutory officer appointment, it will require ratification by full council, which we will bring to a special council meeting on the 15th of May, adjacent to other activities planned. Moving forward quickly with this will provide sufficient time for a smooth handover process, consultation on interim arrangements below the CEO, and time to properly consider the best approach to appointing to the role on a more permanent basis later in the year. I'm sure you will all want to congratulate Damien on his new appointment in your own time and place. Yeah. 
Just as an update, I wanted to confirm that the timetable of committee meetings for the new municipal year that was agreed with group leaders is in the process of being scheduled in our diaries. This will include the additional meeting of performance and finance group committee we agreed last year as part of strengthening this function, a provisional date relating to civic awards, and a special executive and full council meeting on the 26th of June to con consider the Regulation 19 version of the local plan. This is a very important stage in the development of the Council's new local plan, so we will be arranging two separate dedicated briefings with time for questions in the lead up to the formal meeting. Might be worth also checking your eye testers up to date, as the rumour has it, it's going to be quite some tome coming our way. Looking ahead, please can I encourage all members to complete the Member Learning and Development Survey that was email, emailed out at the end of last week. It only takes five minutes to complete, and the feedback will help shape the priorities for the Council for the year ahead. Also notable are the two Council staff who have reached their 10-year long service milestone this month. The first is one of our housing officers who is instrumental in helping our residents who are at risk of homelessness to find suitable accommodation in the private rented sector. The second is one of our environmental health assistants who supports the work across the whole service, but also specializes in the inspections related to animals, including riding schools, animal boarding, and dog breeding. Thank you both for your service on behalf of us all. Lastly, as part of our commitment to staff learning and development, there are two more recent successes that I wanted to update, update members on. The first is that the Council's Parking Service Manager, who has gained his City and Guilds qualification relating to parking management. The timing of that was not, uh, didn't pass me by. The second is one of our Revenue Officers, who is part of the team that oversee the collection of Council tax and business rates. They have secured a professional diploma from the Institute of Revenue, Rating and Valuation. Congratulations to both of them on behalf of all members. That's all. I hope to be able to return to normal, sp slightly spicier service next time. However, in the interim, I trust we would all encourage residents, whatever they or we are minded to do, in engaging in the democratic process shortly, something hard won and easily lost, so vital for us all to protect encourage and support. Thank you, Mayor. Moving on to item seven, executive committees and other bodies. Executive minutes. Can I have a proposal for the executive minutes, please? Thank you, Mayor. I would like to propose the minutes of the executive on the 19th of March, 2024. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? Thank you, Mayor. I would like to second the minutes of the 19th of March. Are you happy to receive these minutes? Thank you. Can I have a proposal for the planning application committee minutes on 22nd of February? Thank you, Mayor. I would like to propose the minutes of the planning applications committee of the 22nd of February 2024. Do you have a seconder? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I'm happy to second the Planning Application Committee um, minutes from the 22nd of February. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to propose the uh, Planning Application Committee minutes from the 21st of March 2024. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to second those minutes. Members, are you happy to receive these minutes? Can I have a proposal for the performance and finance scrutiny committee minutes? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to propose the performance and scrutiny uh, committee minutes for the 6th of March. Do you have a seconder? Thank you, Madam. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bob. Um, yes, I'm happy to second the minutes of the Performance and Finance Scrutiny Committee of the 6th of March. Thank you, Councillor Mears. Members, are you happy to receive these minutes? Agreed. Can I have a proposal for the External Partnership Select Committee minutes? 
Thank you, Mayor. I would like to propose the minutes of the External Partnership Select Committee on the 12th of March. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? Mayor, I'm happy to second those minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Bates. <laughs> Members, I have to receive these minutes. Can I have a proposal for the Audit Standards and Risk Committee minutes? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to propose the uh, minutes of the Audit Standards. 26th of March, 2024. Thank you, Councillor Bretton. Do you have a seconder? I'm happy to second those minutes. Thank yeah. you, Councillor Rakes. Members, are you happy to receive these minutes? <coughs> Can I have a proposal for the Employment Committee minutes? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'm very happy to propose the acceptance of the Employment Committee meeting uh, minutes that took place on the 28th of March. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? Thank you, Mayor. I'm happy to second those minutes. Thank you. Members, are you happy to receive these minutes? Can I have a proposal for the notes of the Joint Staff Consultative Group? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to propose the minutes of the Joint Staff Consultative Group held on the 7th of March 2024. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? Thank you, Mayor. I'm happy to second those minutes of the meeting that took place on the 7th of March 2024. Members, are you happy to receive these notes? Please. Members, you will see there's a late item to be added to this agenda. Can I have a proposal for the recommendation? Thank you, Mayor. I'm happy to propose the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Macdonald. Do you have a seconder? Thank you, Mayor. I'm happy to second. Do you have any comments, Members? Councillor Wheeler? Um, thank you. Um, my understanding was that because it was a full um, council meeting, it was something that needed to come to the vote of the full council, but I'm happy to be corrected by that um, from our legal advice. Um, this is an allocation to the capital programme that um, was agreed in February. I appreciate that in February we were only at the very early stages of the RAC investigation, um, but I would have thought some contingency could have made, be made for it there. Um, there is in confidential matters um, a semi-justification on the costs that are associated with not doing anything in relation um, to this matter. These include, and I obviously won't go into details because they're confidential, staffing costs and various loss of income items. I asked further questions about some of these items earlier today, but answers were not given and I was referred to re-ask the questions to the portfolio holder. In brief, without the information before me um, and the responses to the questions that I asked, I do not have sufficient data, detail to let me be sure that approving this additional allocation from our funds to our capital programme represents good value for money for our residents. The need to rush into this in this meeting with the last minute papers and many unanswered questions puts me in mind of the last time that I was in this chamber with that kind of decision before me. And that related to the purchase of the House of Fraser. And we all know how well that went. Thank you. Councillor Quinn. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a couple of quick points to make. I note that a council press release was released a couple of days ago um, about this decision that seemed to preempt it coming to a formal vote tonight. Um, I just found that a bit strange that a press release was released by the council before we've actually made a decision. Um, and I'm wondering why we're not taking the opportunity to simultaneously look at improving the energy efficiency and visitor experience at Camberley Theatre, along with dealing with the rat concrete issue. So for example, the draft and cold spots in the reception area. Uh, would it not be cost effective to address multiple issues in one go to minimize disruption? Thank you. Councillor McDonald, I've just been advised that um, it may be prudent for you to introduce this motion. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I think maybe my civility got the better, better of me there. Um, thank you, Mayor. 
Um, as Councillor John Skipper is enjoying much deserved time with his family uh, this Easter holidays, it falls on me to introduce this item. The theatre is the only council owned building where we have found RAC to be present after a wide ranging review across the borough for which we thank Darren Burgess for his commitment to ensuring we keep residents and others safe. This item is seeking approval of an increase in the capital programme of approximately £625,000 to enable the proactive remediation of the RAC concrete at the theatre subject to confirmation of the exact risk based requirements from professional technical advice after intrusive inspection. We know that the nature of rack is that it deteriorates over time and that at some point the condition of the rack in the theatre will reach a point where we will have no option but to close the venue if not remediated appropriately. Rather than wait for this point to be reached, which could be weeks or months or years away for different areas of the theatre and could result in an extended unplanned period of closure, this report seeks council approval to make financial provision now within the cap council's capital program for the required remediation works that potentially will be required to secure its position as a much loved community cultural hub in Surrey Heath into the medium term. The advantage of doing this now is that it will enable any future decision regarding specific remediation works to the RAC to be undertaken in a timely and efficient way minimising the period during which the theatre will have to close and enabling detailed design and commissioning of the works to be undertaken at a later stage, at an earlier stage, sorry. As it is the norm for the Council's capital programme, once the funding has been allocated, the decision on the detailed scope, timing and oversight of the works will be one for the executive to consider. A report on the approach to tackling the rack in the theatre is due to be considered by the executive next Tuesday. And the papers have been published to which the press release refers to, not the decision this evening around the capital budget. Allocating the funding within the capital program at the meeting this evening will enable the relevant executive members and officers to navigate smoothly through a fluid situation effectively. Lastly, I would like to thank Kaylee Stockley for her positive leadership of the theatre team through this uncertain period, as well as Sue McCubbin and especially Nick Stevens in the preparation of the various reports and associated briefings to members. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to move the recommendation to increase the capital programme by approximately 625,000, as per the detail in the report, for the RAC remediation and related works at the theatre, subject to the executive meeting next week. Thank you. Councillor Garrett, the Councillor Cope. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, firstly, I've never made a secret that I am a massive supporter of the arts and Camby Theatre as a regular user of the, of, of the place. So the fact that there's any chance that it could be shut for a sh even a short period of time is, is a scary one for me. That being said, um, I do wonder if this is coming to executive next week, whether this is a decision that after the discussions that I'm sure will come up at the executive, this is maybe something that could wait to the, the following um, full council once everybody has had a dis uh, able to discuss things. If we relate back to the paper that's out for the executive, there are a few things that um, come to mind. Um, one is £625,000 capital budget. Where is that actually going to be coming from? Because um, obviously that's not an insignificant amount of money. Um, and I'm aware that we're obviously in a difficult financial situation. Um, income loss, because as the paper also says, the executive paper, not this paper, shows that the theatre is going to be shutting on the 15th of April, which is next week, and it will be shut for three weeks. Um, do we know at this point what income will be lost from the three weeks closure? And do we believe, as a school governor, having dealt with asbestos before, I know that when you have a plan, they don't always go to plan, um, and the, whilst three weeks is still three weeks, if the, they find more asbestos or there's more damage, that obviously could be extended. So what are the long, what are the, the, 
moving forward as far as the costs involved in the shutting of the theatre for the three weeks plus. And obviously, um, the people that were coming in will have books to come in and they'll be expecting the income. So, I, and I appreciate all of uh, those things may or may not have been looked at because this has been obviously a quick decision. But for me, there's a lot of unanswered questions and I've obviously been copied in on the, uh, the emails from uh, Councillor Wheeler and there's obviously some unanswered questions there. So for me tonight, whilst I am more than happy to support the theatre, I'm concerned that we're rushing into deciding on spending £625,000 without an in-depth, long discussion on it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cope. Then Councillor Mears. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm slightly echoing what Councillor Garrett's just said. Um, my understanding is that at the Executive next week, there will be a consideration of various options for the theatre going forwards. Um, so it seems that we're pledging money before that decision's even been made on what we're doing. Um, and to me, that seems to be happening in completely the wrong order, and I'm pretty uncomfortable with it. But I'm even more uncomfortable with being asked to commit £625,000, having seen a paper at 2pm this afternoon, not knowing it was coming. It's becoming a bit of a trend, and I feel like we're trying to be bounced into this decision without full scrutiny and debate, and therefore I'm just not comfortable supporting it on that basis, I'm afraid. Councillor Mears. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm quite surprised that the specialist contractor, who was a glowing report in this report, um, was not able to give us any better detailed timeframes um, on when we can expect the rack needs to be addressed by, and perhaps that would have given us a bit more breathing room um, to address this report, which, again, we only received five hours ago, um, and it's not sympathetic with the scrutiny training that all of us members have done. Thank you. Is there any... Councillor Rowlands. Yes, Madam Mayor, as I understand it, the um, chronology of what, what's being proposed makes it quite essential that we come to the decision tonight, because otherwise we're going to be well behind the process that will be necessary to get the, the theatre up and running as soon as possible, and the consequences, losses that are involved in that. Councillor McFadden. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to make an observation of what the Conservative members have been saying here. Uh, theatre is almost a heartbeat of this town. And we have come to know about REC problem recently. And a figure, have, figure has been put together by the exec for us to consider. That does not mean it will be used until the exec looks at it in detail. Having said that, you ask, someone asked the question, I'm not here to answer on behalf of the leader, having dealt with money. That, having said that, the 600,000 comes out of a capital budget, which is not, you borrow the money, you spend it, you earn it, move on. That's the way it works. I hope I, hope I made my question very clear. I'm an absolute supporter of the theater, and I'll be voting for it. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm not actually speaking on the motion. I'm just requesting. I'm just requesting that when we come to a vote, it's a recorded vote. If there is somebody else that will second that, thank you. No, I'm happy to second that. Any other speakers? Councillor Macdonald. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, I think it's important maybe we take some input from the officers as to why we are doing it this way round, because I do understand the comments of uh, the colleagues across the chamber that normally we would do this the other way round. Um, perhaps somebody could give me some insight, perhaps the Chief Executive or the Monitoring Officer could just give everybody some insight of, around this minded to recommendation that I believe we're doing this evening. And then I'd like to come back, if that's possible, with the Mayor's forbearance. Thank you, Councillor MacDonald. <coughs> Mr Roberts. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor MacDonald. Um, 
Members will recall that uh, the Council sets usually its capital programme uh, at the budget setting meeting. It makes broad allocations against particular themes, uh, but that money cannot be spent until a report, a more detailed report, is brought in front of the executive, setting out the options, the scope, the timescales, the costs. Um, the question's already been asked about why wasn't this brought forward as part of the capital programme in February? And the answer is that the understanding of the situation on RAC within the theatre was still unfolding. Um, with the benefit of hindsight, maybe it would have been prudent to include a provisional allocation at that stage. But we're also very careful not to put items in the capital programme for things that we are unlikely to be taking forward. It's only come to light in recent weeks, following the ongoing survey work within the theatre, that there is a very real risk that further investigations could identify problems with the RAC that could result in the closure of the theatre. If that was to happen, what would result is a significant period of closure and therefore significant cost to the council. And so the advice of the officers that were given to the members that resulted in the paper being brought in front of you today is that by taking an early decision on the broad allocation, recognising that the executive would still have to consider the detailed proposals, you would minimise the period of closure of the theatre and you would minimise the exposure of the council to financial risk, because if the, if the theatre has to close, the council will face significant ongoing fixed-term costs without the benefit of income to offset it. So this, this proposal is really done in the interest of the council to keep its costs and risks to a minimum. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr Roberts. Councillor MacDonald. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Thank you, Mayor. Um, what I picked up from the various comments from the members was a, was a few things. Mayor. Oh, sorry, Mayor, I think Mayor, your, your light's on. Thank you. Um, a few things there. There was, there was why now. I think the why now is that if we don't make the decision today, potentially the theatre will close for longer than three weeks while it waits for this body to provide the funding for uh, relevant and appropriate measures to be progressed. And I don't think that's in the interests of the town. I don't think that's in the, in the interests of the staff in the theatre. Uh, and I don't think it's in the interests of, of this council's reputation as a whole. So by making the decision today to give some headroom to the capital budget, uh, we um, potentially avoid doing that. Now, it is not the intention um, to go crazy and spend that month 625,000 on day one. It's about being able to take the necessary steps to progress the works as it unfolds, as we get additional detail from the technical uh, responsible parties. And I'm sorry if Councillor Mears, you think the technical body should be able to already give this information to us, but unfortunately they've not been able to inspect all of the rack planks yet. And that's why we need to give them time to do it properly. So that's the why now. In terms of where is the money going to come from, I think that is a discussion that we still need to have as an executive and we need to take advice from the 151. We do have potentially the option of taking it from reserves. This is something that is out of the blue. I think we're all aware that this issue across the public estate has emerged over the last year in particular uh, and therefore potentially very much the sort of thing you would have Murray squirreled away for. Uh, to address. However, that is not a decision we've made and not a discussion we've yet had. Um, but yes, whether we take it uh, from reserves or whether we take on uh, additional borrowing and MRP associated with it is still a discussion to be had. Um, I think it's fair to say that some of the challenges with this building um, may allude to a pattern of behaviour we have seen with respect to the assets across the estate. Uh, and that's something we'll maybe come back to this chamber at another time and another juncture, uh, given the constraints we're all under uh, at the moment. In terms of the question I think Councillor Garrett asked, or the point Councillor Garrett made around what is the cost of the three-week closure, we believe it to be marginal. And the reason for that is, and I can't, I can't exactly remember the phrase, but something like delicate rephrasing, rephasing has happened. What that means is acts have been encouraged to have their events outside the three-week window. Um, so we haven't, in theory, lost that. 
I think we all know in reality taking three weeks out of a program will have some kind of impact. The numbers are there, you've seen them in the, in the report in terms of the staff costs and other things uh, per, per month. So yes, there would be a cost, but it's probably not as much as those headline figures. Um, I mean, and that is indeed one of the key issues for the theatre going forward, depending what we uncover during this work, this three-week window, is how long would it be required for any remedial work to take and, and what impact that might have uh, more widely. We have seen some information, and I'm probably breaking all precedents by telling this up front, but we have seen some information that we believe the theatre probably adds 50p for every pound it takes into the local economy. Uh, and therefore, that is something that we need to reflect on uh, going forward, which I think intuitively everybody knew, but we, uh, we're starting to get some, some insights into that area, uh, and thanks to the work of the officers uh, and the support team for that. So, um, yes, not ideal uh, to be doing this. We made a conscious decision at the time of the budget not to put anything in the budget that we didn't know we were going to spend. This has unfolded over the time since the budget was put together, uh, and therefore it's appropriate as a, as a mature organisation that uh, wants, to, wants to do the right thing by the town, that we bring this thing forward to the council uh, for consideration. But like I say, the decision today is just to increase the capital headroom that we have, the decision about how we spend that money, when we spend that money, what we spend that money on, resides with the executive, and we'll start that journey next week, as well as the associated controls that go around it. Thank you for your, thank you for your time and forbearance, Mayor. Thank you. I'm just asking the monitoring officer for confirmation because I think we need three uh, people to vote to uh, to support. Uh, uh, just a point of order, Madam Mayor, and I've never, I don't think I've ever used that word in this term, but it's uh, council. Um, this is not a motion, as far as I'm aware, which means we should be able to question it and debate it. I'd like clarification on that, if possible. Well, I was just going to the monitoring officer so, so he could answer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so for this, for this item, councillors are allowed to speak once, and then we will, we will move to the vote in the, in the ordinary course of any item that comes to council. OK. Councillor McGrath. Can I please ask if it could be like a roll call, a recorded vote as well, please? Right, thank you. Thank you. So we have three people, which is Councillor Wheeler, Councillor McGrath, and Councillor Garrett. Yeah? If you want. Yeah. Councillor Thorne. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just a quick uh, point, just looking at going back to the points already made um, as to why we've only really had five hours notice on, on this allocation money, given the portfolio holders signed off this on the 4th of April, and we're now a lot later down the line. Why was this not released to the council earlier on? Thank you. I think this is the first opportunity, wasn't it? Uh, Councillor, uh, Mr. Roberts will re respond. Um, thank you very much, Mayor, and thank you for the question. Um, the, uh, I can confirm that the report was worked on over the last two days and was finalised today. So apologies if the date on the top of the report suggests something otherwise. Thank you. For 
the debate's finished, isn't it? Is it a point of order, Councillor Lee? No. Then um, I'm told the debate is finished. Um, I think the second time I've been denied to speak, my democratic right of elected representative, that is unacceptable. Just on a point of order, Madam Mayor. Point of this order. Is point of order. I would just refer you to the fact that Councillor Thorne just asked a question after the leader had spoken. So in that point of, while that may have broken the rules, I would say that that rule has now, now been broken and Councillor Lee should be allowed to speak. I will ask... Mr. Roberts. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Members. Um, my understanding is that the Mayor uh, asked if there were any other speakers. There were no other speakers. She then referred to the Leader to exercise his right to reply. Point um, of order. And at that point... Point of order. No, that's not what happened. The Leader... I, I apologise for interrupting the um, Chief Executive. The Leader gave his remarks. Councillor Garrett then went to Councillor Thorne. To, ask, to, to say, ask this question, Councillor Thorne then asked his question. So, Councillor Thorne spoke after the leader. I'm sorry that we seem to fall into these procedural mishaps, but that has happened, and I think Councillor Lee should be allowed to ask a question. Councillor Lee, I, it depends. I have the deciding vote. I did allow Councillor Thorne to pass his comment. You may pass your comment, will it, but it will not be debated. Mayor, thank you very much. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. I'm very grateful. Um, so, a couple of observations with this. Obviously, RAC's been unknown about for many years, so one wonders if there's anything that's been accrued in the accounts for these forthcoming problems from the previous administration. So do we have anything in the finances accrued uh, to cope with these types of problems? And were there any previous reports um, in relation to uh, the RAC or any investigations carried out prior to the current administration? Thank you. Right, members, we are going to vote on the original proposal and it will be a recorded vote. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, and good evening, councillors. So for this recorded vote, when your name is called, I'd be grateful if you could confirm for, against or abstain. Councillor Alan Ashbury. For. Councillor Louise Ashbury. For. Councillor Cliff Betton. For. Councillor Johnny Cope. Against. Councillor Kel Fine and Cook. For. Councillor Lisa Fine and Cook. For. Councillor Sean Garrett. Against. Councillor Mary Glowett. For. Councillor Julie Hode. For. Councillor Nirmal Kang. For. Councillor Sabi Kang. For. Councillor Rob Lee. For the theatre. Councillor Sean MacDonald. For. Councillor Emma Jane McGrath. Against. Councillor Lewis Mears. Against. Councillor Sashi Malvaganam. For. Councillor Jacques Olmo. For. Councillor David O'Mahony. For. Councillor Ying Perrett. For the theatre. Councillor Jonathan Quinn. Abstain. Councillor Bob Rakes. For. Councillor Murray Rowlands. For. Councillor Morgan Rise. For. Councillor Pat Tedder. Against. Councillor Josh Thorne. Against. Councillor Kevin Thompson. For. Councillor Victoria Wheeler. Against. Councillor David Whitcroft. For. Councillor Valerie White. Against. Councillor Richard Wilson. For.
The proposal was carried 21 for, 8 against and 1 abstention. The motion was carried. Questions from councillors. I've been advised that no questions have been received from councillors. Leaders, question time. I would like to invite members to ask questions of the leader, Sean, Councillor Sean MacDonald, on issues relating to executive functions. Where appropriate, Councillor MacDonald may refer, to, refer a question to another portfolio holder to respond. You will be aware that the 20 minutes is allocated to leaders' question time. As usual, so everyone can have a chance, I will try to ensure all members have had an opportunity to ask a first question before I invite you to ask a second question. So if you wish to ask more than one question, please prioritise a first question. Please also keep your introduction to your question as short as possible so that we can hear as many questions as possible. As you will be aware, we are in the pre-election period. Please can I remind you to avoid any overtly political questions or statements that could be construed as electioneering. Can I now have the first question from members, please? Councillor Rowlands. I just wonder whether I need to repeat the question again. <laughs> um, if the leader is, has cottoned on to it or is aware of it, perhaps you could answer um, on that basis. Councillor MacDonald. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Rowlands, for giving me the pre-warning. That was extremely helpful. If, if only all the other members would do it, it would be much appreciated. Um, I have been desperately trying to find the programme. I know it's in the machine somewhere. Uh, I, I can't find the programme. We will, we will dig it out and we will make it available to you. There is a programme of events that are trying to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the borough, it, which we've already just had, as you probably appreciate, at the beginning of the month, in a cost-effective manner. So I will dig that programme out and we'll make sure we, get, we make it available to you uh, so you can see what's, what's available. I, I very much respect your own personal commitment to trying to celebrate the, uh, the 50th anniversary and the efforts you put into some supplementary events. I am a little bit saddened that we're not able to support it financially because I know it's coming from a really good place. So thank you, uh, Councillor Rowlands. Thank you. Any Councillor Mears? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible. Um, in 2021, a planning application uh, for three new homes um, in Old Dean was refused. Cite, uh, reasons cited for the refusal was because it had a road, the tree compartment located between Larchwood Glade and Devonshire Drive. Um, it went to the planning inspectorate who agreed with SHBC officers. One of their reasons is that it had directly affect by their removal over a quarter of 200 trees. Skipped October 2023, um, and this council grants a woodland TPO um, to this area after ruthless attempts of development. Um, three weeks ago, a tree works application was received. Um, amongst it is the recommendation by the consultants to fell almost a quarter of the trees. Important note for this is that it's the same tree consultant for all representations of this land now. Monday morning, I expressed my consideration in calling in this tree works application before the 28 day planning calling period. Tuesday morning, I'm told I cannot call this in as it's a tree works application. And the same day, a decision is made um, to permit most of these works. Um, completely in contradiction to the planning inspectorate um, decisions before this council's decisions before. So my questions are, please, with no ability or mechanism for this to come before members in the planning committee, can you confirm whether you think it's appropriate that there's no mechanism in the most recent constitution for works of this magnitude to be called in by members? Um, I have two more brief ones that relate to this. Um, could I ask whether internal tree officer was consulted? If so, what was their advice? If it wasn't internal, what did the external tree officers say? And finally, all the applications um, refer to the same tree consultant, SMW Tree Consultancy. Can you please confirm whether the council has used or uses this consultant to advise the council on tree applications before? Thank you. I will ask Councillor McDonald to, re to respond if he wishes, but it is not an executive function. Councillor McDonald. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you for highlighting that it's not an executive function and therefore not in scope for this uh, set of questions. Um, the, the previous uh, constitute, the current constitution has not been changed since this administration took over uh, in respect to these items. So whatever the procedures are, I think you know who was responsible for putting them in place, Councillor Mears. Uh, with respect to the environment, we very much appreciate Obviously, the, the environment we have here in Surrey Heath, we are blessed uh, with a very green uh, and, and fertile area. Um, and it is, always, it is always an issue, clearly, when, when trees are lost. Um, it is not for members, though, to interfere in those processes. There are delegated uh, procedures in place. Uh, it would not be appropriate, and it will not be done by this administration. So if it's a delegated authority and it's gone through due process, Unfortunately, that is the decision. I don't think members should be interfering in legal planning processes. Thank you. Just a point of order. Planning is an executive function. Councillor Garrett. A point of order. Could we have a response from the monitoring officer on that point, please? Uh, planning is a function of the Planning Applications Committee. So, thank you. Planning executive order. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so the governance has been changed a number of times about other different things. So may I suggest, in view of the fact that the previous administration have been blamed for all the other things that are wrong, can I suggest, as we are members of the governance committee, there's a number of us here, that this is something that is discussed, because I'm sure there are residents within our ward, and we are discussing it here, so I don't know where else we can discuss it if it's not an executive function, that do not like the idea of how many trees? Uh, about 40. 40 trees being taken down, having previously in the planning committee decided that the TPO says that they shouldn't be touched. So I think there's something drastically wrong, and I agree, if it was a previous administration problem, that's fine. But let's not blame it on them, we need to move that forward, yeah? I, I know I was part of that administration, but there's a problem, then we need to move that forward. But the residents do not want to hear we're going to take down 40 trees in Surrey Heath. Thank you. Councillor McDonald. I think uh, Councillor Garrett makes a fair point, and if uh, he or anybody else wishes to bring that forward to the Governance Working Group, we'll, we'll look at it. As far as I'm aware, the uh, Chief Executive regularly puts out uh, notes for uh, topics for discussion and moving forward. Uh, I don't think this one has come up. Uh, I guess the, the reaction from ourselves with respect to Councillor Mears uh, a question is it was quite loaded that it was with respect to the current uh, constitution and the current constitution in this particular aspect has car been carried forward from the previous constitution so uh, unfortunately we uh, we reap what we sow at the moment but we can we can change it and I think your point is fair no, none of us like uh, seeing trees cut down unless obviously it's done in a sustainable uh, sustainable way thank you Councillor Wheeler Thank you, and I'm, I'm sorry to seem confused. If a tree application cannot be considered by the Planning Applications Committee, then it would suggest that it's not a Planning Application Committee function. And therefore, so if it is subject to the Planning Applications Committee, then it should have been reasonable for that application to be called in. If tree matters, are not subject to the Planning Applications Committee, then presumably they would sit underneath the relevant portfolio holder for additional planning functions. So we seem to be very confused here in the advice that we are being given um, within the meeting. If it's a Planning Applications function, then it should be able to come into the Planning Applications Committee. If it's not a Planning Applications function, then it is by its very nature, therefore, something that sits under the executive. So I am sorry to appear um, confused. It's, un it's unusual for me not to be quite clear on planning matters, but I'm certainly not clear following the um, information that I've received here this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wheeler. Councillor, Mr. Bell, too well. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So planning applications are a non-executive function. That's what the legislation states. But it doesn't necessarily have to go to the planning applications committee. It's a non-executive function. So the executive cannot determine planning applications. And three applications that don't go to the planning committee are delegated to 
officers to make those decisions. If, if I may just come back, this is, uh, so some tree applications do go to the Planning Applications Committee. In this case, it was called in, in within the, the, the required time, um, I understand from um, one of the other, from, from one of my councillors here. So therefore, if it can't be called in, it isn't subject to the Planning Applications Committee. So therefore, it should have been able to be called in, or it has to sit with some, within some other function of the council. I'll put it on government. Okay. okay. Madam Mayor. Madam Roundshaw Officer. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you for your further question, Councillor Wheeler. I think we should discuss this offline. It's not a it's not a question for the leader to have to answer in leader's question time. It's not it's not an executive function. But I think we can we can discuss that offline and clarify any any questions. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Wilson. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you for mentioning the signing of the Armed Forces Covenant in your remarks, and thank you to the Leader for mentioning that as well. Um, this borough has very strong historic ties with the Armed Forces going back hundreds of years to the Chobham camp and beyond. And I was very proud to hear that the council has signed the Armed Forces Covenant. Um, would the leader like to reflect a bit more on the commitment that we've made? And will this commitment to members of the Armed Forces and veterans in Surrey Heath be made more public when the unfortunate pre-election period is over on May the 2nd? Thank you. Leader. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Councillor Wilson, for your, for your question. Um, the, commit, the, the signing of the Armed Forces Covenant, which uh, uh, Councillor McIntyre did on our behalf as our Armed Forces uh, champion, was on behalf of all of, all of us. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, on behalf of the administration. It was on behalf of all members and this council. And the commitment we made is to make sure uh, that we give uh, veterans and serving personnel and their families uh, the best possible chance uh, of, of equity due to the uh, challenges that they face. And, and it's, um, as I said in my speech at the time that a few of you, you heard, it was a, a something very close to my heart due to uh, family connections. So uh, we will be delighted to, um, on behalf of the council, uh, publicise that at the end of the period and make sure that everybody in the community knows that we're making that commitment because it's only by spreading the word out there uh, beyond this group of 35 people uh, can we ensure that the people who need our help uh, access our help and we need the members of the community to read the posts to, to encourage that. Thank you for your question. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, can the leader confirm whether or not the, the previous administration had any structural inspection programme in place at all for any of its buildings, including the theatre. Thank you. Councillor MacDonald. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think I may head towards very thin ice uh, quite quickly here if I'm not careful. And therefore, what I would suggest is that we, uh, we come back to you uh, in writing uh, but also we assemble the facts because I don't think we know at this moment in time and therefore it would be unfair to, to give an answer on, on the hoof. Uh, so we'll come back and I'll take guidance as to whether that has to be beyond the normal uh, five working days. Thanks very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Rowlands, then Councillor Wheeler. Yeah. Um, in the light of the clear indications of Thames Water, um, at Thames Water's impending bankruptcy, the Council should support the possible nationalisation of the company and a 
and then make a reapproachment to Thames, because it certainly looks certainly as though Thames are having to go into administration, and it will be essential that the state steps in to support them. So I suppose it's a plea not to give up on the immense amount of work we put into dealing with the stink. Um, and if it, is go if it goes into uh, public ownership, we should actually be making, it, making it aware, the government aware of our view, views on the, on the stink and the difficulties people faced. Councillor MacDonald. Thank you, Councillor Rowlands. Uh, thank you, Mayor, sorry, and Councillor, thank you, Councillor Rowlands, for your question. Yes, I, I have to admit, Councillor Rowlands, I might well wit's end as to what to do with Thames Water, but then I think the government is as well, and, and a few other people. So um, it's a very, very sorry uh, set of circumstances overall, uh, and specifically, obviously, for your residents and the, the residents of, of Watch Its Wards as well. Um, what I can say is that we will continue to try and use every uh, angle we can to, to uh, see whether we can progress the, uh, the meaningful community compensation that we have been. Um, it's fair to say that, uh, that I think uh, um, another responsible person that cannot be named is also trying in his own way uh, to, to do the same. Uh, so we, we, will, we will try and progress that. It is not really uh, for my pay grade to make decisions about the nationalisation of, of Thames Water or any other uh, uh, state-sponsored utility. What I can say is I think the regulatory environment, whether it be the commercial or the, um, or, or the uh, uh, protection of residents, is, is sadly, sadly lacking. And I suspect agreed by the majority of this chamber. Councillor Wheeler. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I would also like to point out this is my first question to the leader. I hadn't asked any other questions, um, so uh, the order um, is a little bit disappointing. Um, does the leader feel that the current confusion as to whether applications to remove trees and raise them to the ground that seems to be neither a planning application function or an executive function is something that he feels needs urgent clarification and action? And will he join me in raising concerns that a decision has been made that is against the recommendations of a planning inspector and against the democrat democratically agreed supplementary planning documents is unfortunate? Thank you. Councillor MacDonald. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Wheeler, for your question. Uh, I certainly think after tonight's discussion there will be some, some looking into the, the detail of this. Um, however, I think it has been identified by the monitoring officer that this is, is not an area that, uh, that I should be answering questions on. I think we need to look at uh, why, why this has unfolded the way it has, uh, and it may or may not be within our powers to change it, because it may be linked to the, the planning legal framework. Um, which is probably part of the reason why I'm not supposed to be answering questions on it. Um, but I certainly think we'll be keen to look into that and come back to you in due course. Thank you, Councillor MacDonald. Uh, any further questions? That concludes the business of the meeting and I'd like to thank everyone for attending.